Ford has recently announced a whole lot of discounting. If you have a Tesla, they're trying really hard to sell their electric cars to Tesla owners, but it's going to be a really tough uphill battle for them. Now, why do I say that? Well, here's the reason. 87% of US Tesla drivers say they are going to buy another Tesla. This has never happened ever in the automotive industry. There, there has never been 87% of previous buyers commit or say they're committing to buying a new version of the same brand. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. It's really testament, isn't it, to one thing, not necessarily to Tesla themselves, but to the electric car, uh, to the good electric car. I mean, we don't hear this about Nissan Leaf owners, do we? Guys, I'm sorry. Sincere apologies. Not really. If you have a Tesla, uh, if you have a Nissan Leaf, uh, you know, they're okay. Nothing wrong with it. But let's be fair. There's no way that 87% of uh, Nissan Leaf owners were going to buy another Nissan, is there? Realistically. I mean, yeah. So if you make a good electric car, then people will come back and they'll want to buy it again. Tesla has an 87% brand retention rate. Lexus has 68%, which is the highest, uh, second highest to Tesla, I should say. Toyota is 54%, uh, their third highest. So, so there's a lot of people who love Toyota, right? And, and just, they don't care if the next Toyota sucks or if it's the same as the last Toyota, same engine, uh, they'll still buy it, right? The price goes up, they'll buy it anyway. But yeah, Tesla's, Tesla's brand retention rate is just astronomical, 87%. It's gonna be really hard for Ford get, to get these new Conquest sales. In addition, 81% of prospective US Tesla drivers are new customers switching from competing EV brands. I mean, this is insane. Bloomberg says this, right? You guys, well, some people say, oh, you're just making things up, telling your opinions. It's not my opinions. It's coming from Bloomberg Intelligence. This is the research arm of Bloomberg. Um, they interviewed a thousand adults planning on buying or leasing a new car in the next year. And they used criteria to reflect a nationally representative sample of geography and gender. These guys have a lot of experience in doing these kinds of studies. And they've said 81% of prospective US Tesla drivers are new customers switching from competing EV brands. So they're conquest, conquest sales. That's quite incredible. Bloomberg Intelligence says that US EV penetration will reach 25% by 2030. And I think that's not going to happen. I think it'll be way higher than that. But maybe I have too much faith in Americans. What do you think, Americans? Let me know. That's because EVs continue to pick up major traction in the US, with adoption continuing to accelerate ever, even amid charging infrastructure challenges and overall affordability. Now, speaking of charging infrastructure, I always think, you know, there's so many places to charge your vehicle in America, if you have to. There's so many places to charge, way more than there are gas stations. I don't really understand all that. Anyway. The survey found that 42% of respondents were considering purchasing an EV as their next car, and 23% were considering hybrid EVs, in contrast to the current 7% penetration in hybrid EVs. 9% of those surveyed favored EVs, an increase on the 7% EV penetration last year. I don't know what that means. Anyway, Bloomberg Intelligence Research says the prospective auto purchasers who already own an EV are extremely loyal to their cars. And I've found that to be the case. For example, if I make a video um, pointing out facts about, for example, BYD, and it sounds negative, I get destroyed on social media. People, people like they get very passionate about the EV they buy. Doesn't it doesn't matter if you're presenting facts from someone else, from uh, you know good data sources. They'll say I'm clickbaiting. So people definitely are very very loyal. So people who already own an EV says Bloomberg are very loyal to their cars. A lot of that I think is, you know, you commit to spending a lot of money and you want to feel like you made the right decision. If someone else appears to be questioning that, I'm not questioning that by the way, but if it appears that I am, then people react very strongly to that. The report found that 93% would stick with their current powertrain for their next purchase compared to 34% of gas car owners who are considering switching to an EV. Now that's actually a pretty major disruption. 93% would stick to EVs, 
Um, but 30, 34% of gas car owners are considering switching. I think the disruption is going to happen quicker than what a lot of people in the US. Now, of course, the benefits of owning an EV are immense. And really, I think the biggest challenge here for people is just change. People struggle to deal with doing something differently, something new. So that's for the reason that a lot of people haven't bought an EV, not because they're not better, because they are. I mean, how many times do you need to see these um, evidence of these electric car owners doing 300, 400, 500,000 miles and never servicing their vehicle with very minimal servicing repairs? That's not happening in every case, but it's happening about 98% of the time. That's going to save you an immense amount of money, not to mention the things like brakes you don't need to replace, um, gasoline you don't need to purchase. Yeah. So this so it makes sense that when people are buying an EV, they, they don't want to go back. Steve Mann, Global Lead Director for Auto and Industrial Market Research at Bloomberg Intelligence, and the lead author said, Tesla, General Motors, and Stellantis, their slew of affordable EV models set for debut by 2026 may tap more mass market buyers. Despite this, the market still has a long way to go to mature with charging network inadequacy, range anxiety, and extended charging wait times topping the list of concerns for all car buyers. Do you agree with him? I mean, do you think that charging network inadequacy, range anxiety, and extended charging wait times are legitimate concerns? Are they just sort of people things people say because they're scared of change, or are they real things? Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for watching.